As a woman, I had to be look around. I had a taser. I had a paper gas, and I I was always afraid. But now I even sleep on the bus when I'm traveling. You can feel it in the air that it's safe now. You yes. don't see like weird people standing around staring at you. In Berlin, paying for anything is so easy because you just use playing for your wallet, you know, your Lightning wallet, and it's done in a second. And like they show you that they receive the money and they move on. To, to help the next client. It's Bitcoin country, the country of freedom. I feel really proud to say I am Salvadorian. You never have enough Bitcoin. That's, that's the easiest question. Are you both from, from El Salvador? No, I'm actually Mexican. Okay, but you are yeah. both now living in El Salvador. Um, I'm currently living in Argentina and I was uh, in El Salvador for like eight months or so, specifically oh. living in Berlin. Yes. Oh, how was, how was the experience in Berlin? To me, it was amazing. Well, I, I guess for all the foreigners that spent time in, in Berlin, it's, it's great to be there. Uh, but for me personally, it was like a life changing experience because when I made it to Berlin, I knew practically nothing about Bitcoin. And then I leave the town and I'm already a Bitcoiner and I'm asking my boss to pay me in Bitcoin and everything. <laughs> it all happened for me in Berlin. So, so, you, so yeah. you came to Berlin without knowing about Bitcoin. Uh, so, like, what was your reasoning to, to be in Berlin in the first place? Uh, I made it there because my partner at the time he wanted to be involved in a Bitcoin project, you know, in the real world and not just in his computer. And then he met Evelyn and, and Gerardo, and he decided to move to Berlin in a you know in the blink of an eye. Um, I was with him, so we moved to Berlin. <laughs> And it happened. Everything going on in Berlin for me was Bitcoin related. So it was just a matter of time. I was going to end up absorbing everything. Yeah, I feel like the, uh, the, the moment you get orange build is just the moment you have enough information about Bitcoin in your head. Like the, the more you get educated on, on Bitcoin, it's just a matter of time until you actually uh, get it. Uh, but Evelyn, you are always in El Salvador, right? Yeah, she's born and nice. raised in El Salvador. Yeah, totally. How was it for you? Did you get orange built before the president adopted it with the legal tender, or did did also like this this whole Bitcoin thing uh, came came onto you, or how was it for you? Um, well, basically, I knew about Bitcoin in 2019, so it was a, a little before. But I started to like dive deep into Bitcoin after the law became a legal tender here in El Salvador after Bitcoin was a legal tender. And because I started to try, um, try to get involved in, in Bitcoin here in El Salvador, so I ended up uh, giving Bitcoin education here. And then we transitioned to this project, which, which was a circular economy. So that's how basically uh, the transition was. But I, I did know about Bitcoin on 2019. Now you got uh, with Gerardo, you started this whole Bitcoin Berlin journey, like uh, next to the things that were with Bitcoin Beach, next to the things that were happening with the legal tender. Uh, Gerardo and you, uh, when I got it right, started the Bitcoin Berlin where you just like onboarded merchants and also have like the education on everybody. Like uh, maybe let's quickly go there. Like how did you and Gerardo start this whole Bitcoin Berlin uh, journey? Yes, but, but, but as I was mentioning, we were giving Bitcoin education in El Salvador. And we, at the moment, we were earning Bitcoin. So we didn't have a place to, to spend it, actually. And it was a nightmare to try to withdraw money from the ATMs. We had to move to a city where there are not that many ATMs. And so we tried to find a solution <laughs> and the solution was to create the circular economy. So we, we started to um, try to look for places where we could actually live on a Bitcoin standard. And that's how we came here to Berlin. Um, when we saw the city, spoke to people, we saw the potential in the city. This is a mountain town. The weather is at school. At least uh, if you um, 
compare with other regions in El Salvador, it's it's cooler. And so it's a touristic place as well. And yeah, that's how we we came with the idea of let's do it here and let's try to replicate what um, what happened in El Sante. So we started to talk to people in the beginning. It was uh, Gerardo and me trying to talk to the businesses. We were there first. So we uh, changed strategies several times until we finally found that we needed a more friendly approach because we were like um, most more like a regular Bitcoiner trying to just to orange peel people like upfront and, and saying, hey, do you know about Bitcoin and things like that? But um, it's a little bit different. Um, you have to sort of become rem- friends with people or customers. They need to get to know you, to trust you somehow. And that's how we started to onboard businesses. We were the customers who paid in Bitcoin. And in the beginning, we were exchanging that Bitcoin for fiat. So we were like basically like an ATM that we came um we came once a week to the city. We were here like every day, but we told the merchants we are going to be here once a week so that they will try to spend it or something. And then after just a short period of time, we stopped um, exchanging money because there were enough businesses accepting Bitcoin. And that happened uh, at least really fast the first 17th merchants I think and people was really excited because we were using the maps to showing them um, the pins and that was the huge help because we didn't have any pin in the beginning so we were showing them look around or we don't have any any pins in the map so you are the first one you are the second one and you're the third one and so on and so on. And people was excited to see more more fiends in the map. And that was a motivation for us too. So we kept on going and then more people started to get familiar with what we were doing because we didn't want to only um, try to do Bitcoin stuff, but we wanted to help the city. And a lot of people, they wanted to take pride in the city. So we started the cleaning campaigns. We tried to get involved with social projects here. And more people got to join the team. And they were orange peel. And they were uh, orange peeling more people. And that's how this process has going on. And um, also expats that came here, they have been a huge help and a great addition to to the team. I think... At the beginning, some people were, they were kind of distrustful, some people, but the moment we actually took, you know, batters in hand and started being like volunteering for the town and cleaning things around or like trying to paint the park and, uh, you know, anything that they could see us being involved practically in improving the, the city, that distrust, uh, it was qu- rapidly gone. You know, they changed their minds. Uh, quickly and even the people that at the time were not accepting bitcoin they were even more welcoming with the foreigners and the the whole group because they knew we were uh good that it was a good addition to the city and not just people trying to like invade or like you know gentrify uh their space because there's normal fear uh in people seeing all these foreigners coming along and trying to pay in a different currency and stuff and the moment they actually saw us trying to be just another you know, barely nest, getting involved. That's, uh, that was a quick um, turnaround for many people to just like us. And in time, they started asking questions like, hey, so this Bitcoin thing, how does, how does it, this work? And uh, that was amazing to see. Like people who, before all of that, because Evelyn and Gerardo, they had great ideas to just, you know, as the Salvadorians, uh, they, they knew how to earn people's trust. And they started dragging all of us to do the same. And of course, we, we got involved and, and helped and did the things they, um, that they were thinking about. That insight, it, it was key to each people's mind, not only on this wave of people moving into the town, but 
maybe like thinking, is this Bitcoin thing something I would like to include in my daily life? Is this something I want to accept in my business? Is this something that's going to improve my life too? Because all the all all the locals that were already involved in 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 the group they were getting the chance to talk to to foreigners and you know get that mix of culture and uh, adding Bitcoin to their lives with all the good things that it involves. And of course, they want it in with it, right? So that helped the movement inside Berlin grow in a very organic, natural way. All right, that's a that's an amazing insight. I also I, a, a thought that I, as someone who never was in El Salvador, never had actually, because you have a country yes. that has uh, uh, Bitcoiners, that, that has just normal, regular citizens in there that have maybe never or never really heard about Bitcoin. Then there is the president coming along and having all those great ideas about Bitcoin and trying to force the, it on the on the citizens. Then uh, you have foreigners coming in more and more and saying, hey, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. And it could feel for the citizens that there's just outside pressure p putting something on on us that maybe we don't even want, which is an interesting thought that I never had. And that's why, like, uh, of course, and that's why it's also uh, interesting that it started as an, a grassroots movement in Bitcoin Beach and the whole story with Czech Malas and then, then in a book uh, doing that. Uh, but uh, then you also have to get on the ground and actually do the hard work to go to every merchant, go to every person and see, and tell them why Bitcoin is actually important uh, and why we are doing that. It's 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 fascinating to see that that change in mind and the change in, in the society. Maybe Vanya, uh, for you, it's interesting also like uh, you have been in Argentina, now you're in, in Mexico, you have been all in different places. How... How different is El Salvador now? Like how 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 different was El Salvador in the in the eight months? Did it change? And also how different is it to Argentina, and Mexico, and maybe even like I don't know if you have been in in Europe or to other places. How can you compare El Salvador to other places? Yes, I, I have been in Europe uh, uh, before. Uh, I think out of all the you know the continents, it's the most different one because it's the one with the oldest buildings and you know all of that. In Latin America, everything is very new. Buildings are different. Um, recent structures or like, you know, mo modern structures as there is in Europe too. But um, Mexico is um, a very seat country <laughs> now, I think. Uh, but if, as I, I now know, the Mexican currency by fiat standards is a very stable one. So uh, we depend on the dollar a lot. If the U.S. falls, I don't think Mexico is going to be able to stand for long. Uh, and we have the, the safety issues that really have changed lifestyle for many people in the north and the south of, south of the country. And El Salvador is a completely safe uh, place. You can walk around with your phone in your hand and you know for sure nothing's going to happen. There were plenty of times where I was in a restaurant and I would leave my phone on the table, walk away to ask something to the, to the wait, waitress if she was busy. And I would go back to my table and I didn't even think I left my phone in the table, right? And I wouldn't do that in Argentina, even though it's a safe or like relatively safe country. I wouldn't do that here because I know there's not a culture like there is in El Salvador for safety and responsibility. Because in El Salvador, people are actually tired of, of, you know, of like delinquents and all of that. There's just decent people getting by. In Mexico, there's places where you could like, Maybe even not go. But if you want to be safe, maybe just don't head that way if you don't know how to navigate those areas. Right now in Argentina, one thing that I miss the most being here right now and having spent, you know, eight months in Bitcoin City is paying for anything in Argentina is a pain. You know, if you don't have like tons of bills, like it's just like, rel it's practically like 1,000 Argentinian pesos is a dollar so you have this one bill to pay for like a dollar and everything i don't know if your bill is twenty five uh, thousand argentinian pesos you have to take out 25 bills or like if you have two uh bills like it would be like two dollars you have to count all those bills to pay for anything i remember the first time i was here visiting 
uh, in February, we paid for uh, food at a restaurant and the guy just saw the bills and, and said, like, very tired. Huh, just a bunch of paper, huh? And rolled his eyes like, even they are tired. In Berlin, paying for, uh, for anything is so easy. Because you just use Blink or your wallet, you know, your Lightning wallet, and it's done in a second. And like they show you that they receive the money and they move on to to help the next client. And even in Mexico, like you can, you have to wait for your ticket and like bills are not as much as in, uh, in, in Argentina or you can pay with a credit card and anything. But you have to wait for your ticket and they have to register everything in their system. And, you know, there's this whole ceremony to pay for absolutely everything because taxes, right? <laughs> And that doesn't happen in Berlin. The best place to go shopping, I, I would say, in the world right now, it's Berlin because it's so easy to just have everything in your wallet, pay for stuff, don't be tracked by government if you don't want to. That is such a relief. And in Argentina, it's so different. In Europe, it's very uncomfortable. You can pay with, you know, with your bills or you can pay, pay with your credit card and there's some Bitcoin accepted or Bitcoin preferred places. But they're not that many. You have to look at them. You have to look for them in the map. And right now in Mendoza, I have been trying to find a Bitcoin preferred or like Bitcoin accepted uh, restaurant or cafe or anything. Sadly, whenever I get in touch or I show up to the place, they're like, no, we don't accept Bitcoin. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. But even, you know, there's beauty in all places. I, I love my country. If you ask me, Mexico is the best country in the world, even though we all know it's not. Argentina is amazing. But seriously, if, because in, in, in El Salvador, whenever you visit, you'll see that um, in the capital, even though people know and they are familiar with Bitcoin, it's not easy to find a place that accepts Bitcoin. But then you move, you go to Berlin, and every, you practically leave the dream of the Bitcoin standard. You know, real life. That's that's amazing. Yeah, I also heard that a lot in, in El Salvador. It's like uh, El Sonte and Bitcoin Berlin. They're like the big places where you can spend a lot of uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Beach. Like those are the places. But like even outside, probably they, they just have the problems with the adoption. They have to get to everybody. Uh, like even even though it's legal tender, merchants have to be onboarded. Merchants don't want to just accept something new. They have to ed be educated on stuff like that. So that's that's an interesting journey to, to, to be on. Maybe also yeah. the franchises. The big uh, franchises, it's harder for them to accept Bitcoin. But when you talk to small business owners, they might be more inclined to accept Bitcoin rather than if you go to KFC and try to pay with Bitcoin, right? Mm. Yeah, that, I think that, that that's one of the the differences or the highlight points of Berlin that almost all the businesses are family owned and it's easier to find the the owner and talk to them about accepting Bitcoin. Whereas if you go to a KFC or any other of these big chains, you will not be able to talk to the owner. You have to talk to the manager and then they have to, it's it's like a chain to get to somebody yeah, who can an make the corporate. decision. Yeah, so it's it's difficult. So, and, and we felt the pain uh, last time that we were in San Salvador. And because in Berlin, I don't, usually I don't have any cash on me. And so we went to this event in San Salvador. And as always, I didn't have money. <laughs> I didn't have dollars, and uh, we we went to um to buy a um lunch, and at the time that I had to pay, I just realized I don't have money, so I had yeah I have to borrow money from somebody to be able to pay, because they they were like no we don't accept Bitcoin, and as much as we tried to talk to them. They didn't want to and that that was a big restaurant a lot of foreigners go there because of that place it's really like touristic but they are not accepting bitcoin and i was like shocked because <laughs> i i was i was living there so we just moved to berlin like uh, less than a year ago we were living in san salvador and i realized how different it is now that i'm i'm used to pay with bitcoin going to places where you cannot even in san miguel it's it's hard san miguel it's one hour away from berlin 
And it's hard to find like a lot of places where you can spend Bitcoin. So uh, as you were saying, uh, we need to educate more uh, vendors. We need more educators in El Salvador because the, the reason why people, I think it's um, reluctant in some way to accept Bitcoin is because of the fear to the unknown. They are afraid to the um, ups and downs of Bitcoin fluctuation there were a lot of scams so you need to clear out a lot of doubts uh, you need to give them the tools because not everybody trusts uh, Chivo wallet for example there, there were a lot a lot of scams using that particular wallet um, identity stolen and things like that so they don't want to use it but they maybe don't know that there are many other wallets that they can use and so but we need to keep on educating people because uh, I, I think it's at the when people they get familiar with Bitcoin and that that's what we did in, in Berlin. Some of them they they were afraid they didn't trust. We just told them just download the wallet, don't use it for the business, but try to yeah to get familiar. We get will send familiar you with that. It. Yeah, we will send you some sets just to test. Can you send it back? I'm gonna send you again, and and we were doing that like over and over again, and then they were like. It just not afraid anymore and it is just like they started to take bitcoin at least from from some of us uh because they trust us and they didn't like have that option for all the customers but for a few and as they were like seeing bitcoin stable dollars or it, uh, stable sats and things like that they then um they lost that fear that they had um how did it change in the last five years and especially when you look out like i feel like we are in el salvador still in the early stages where we are just just now bitcoin just came now to el salvador and and this whole new spirit and also nick bukele is doing a lot of things uh really good for the country as i think with the free passports with bringing uh, bitcoiners and bitcoin companies in there like there's a lot of good things in addition to Bitcoin, even with the gangs and stuff like that. Uh, but what do you see, like, how did El Salvador for you personally change in the last, like, five years uh, where you lived there? Uh, and uh, in what direction do you see El Salvador going, like, uh, in the next years? I got that. I think that that's one of my favorite questions. Because um, the, there's a before and after, definitely. I mean, you can just... Uh, see it i mean no one can deny that el salvador has changed not one single salvadorian can deny it but well, before um in the matter of security um so i had as a woman i had to be look around i had a taser i had a paper gas and i i was always afraid um because a lot of uh, my friends i have you know, some horrible stories of people that it's no longer in this world and friends of mine. But yeah, it, it was a nightmare. Um, and so but for women and, and for men, it's it was like hard if uh, a guy went to an area that he didn't belong. The chances are that he was not going to be out of that place, at least alive. Or for a woman, something bad will happen to her. She might be alive, but something bad will happen to her. And that was a daily life. So it was a deep uh, worrying about, am I going to make it alive to my house today? Um, I was afraid to to travel, to, to come to see my mom because of uh, all of the gangs and the insecurity. But now uh, I even sleep on the bus when I'm traveling. So that's the kind of safety that I feel now. And uh, in the streets, I mean, it's it's all different for us that we leave that um, gang uh, situation. You can feel it in the air that it's safe now. You don't see like weird people standing around staring at you. So it's it's great. Uh, to see that change. Um, not only that, I think that overall El Salvador has changed. Uh, Bitcoin was a, a huge help for that because it, it helped with tourism. 
So it was, as, as the president or the, the government said, it was uh, e rebranding because now it's not El Salvador, it's the most dangerous place in the world because of the gangs. Right now it's, it's Bitcoin country, the country of freedom. That's, you know, it, uh, to me as a Salvadorian, I feel really proud to say it. I am Salvadorian. I am really proud when I hear people talking good things about El Salvador, their experiences here. Because before it, you were only here like most of the bad things that happen here. And now you see tourism has increased. Education, I think it has a lot of um, improved a lot. Uh, kids, because I was uh, giving classes at school and I, I was witness that kids, they had a meal per day at least given by the government and they got tablets, they got laptops to to help kids to be able to have a better access to technology, education itself. So it's been great and I think a lot of great things are going to continue happening with all these companies coming to El Salvador, technology, a lot of uh, jobs are going to be created. And I see a lot of development in El Salvador within the next five years. And as a Salvadorians, I think uh, if more Salvadorians are seeing these podcasts as well, we need to get involved because this is not the job of the government only. It is the job for every Salvadorian, every citizen to try to make the best of El Salvador, not just for our generation, but for the next ones are coming amazing i i love it uh the, the story is really cool because it's first of all the the story that i heard from everybody like uh it seemingly everybody agrees on on that that el salvador got so much more safe i heard some stories where businesses now put signs again on on their stores because before they were not putting the signs because they were actually afraid of getting robbed and stuff like that and now they put a sign on top and they are proud to be a business owner and stuff like that. So like, it, it seems like there's like a lot of startup uh, spirit, a lot of uprising spirit in the El Salvadorian uh, uh, community, which is uh, it's amazing to, to see that uh, El Salvador is, is improving and that there's a country where there's now a real world application with Bitcoin. Obviously, there's other things also happening in, in El Salvador and obviously... El Salvador had a, a low starting place with the murder rate and everything like they, they had a lot of room up to improve and now they can show how how much it can actually improve like tourism uh, with, with the productivity uh, adaptivity for the, the businesses will be will be really interesting and that's why I'm also really passionate about uh, inviting so many El Salvadorians and people that with that uh, background on my podcast because when we'll see it in 10 years 15 years and we can look back in in time and see those podcasts ma made by people that are actually living there and they were just telling what's happening and what will happen and this actually plays out in the long run i feel like that's that will be great uh, to, to see and i'm already looking forward to clipping from in my podcast in 10 years and telling you i told you so on my podcast <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 looking forward to or do that. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing, how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self-custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a Bitbox. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in middle of Europe. 
in June, the Bitcoin Prague Conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in all of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague Conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. And I guess, Vanya, your experience was also kind of the same uh, when you were eight months in, in El Salvador or the, to what time, what, what year was that when you were there? Uh, I made it to Berlin in August, I think, 2023, and I left uh, about a month ago. As, uh, yeah, my experience was the same out of all the countries I've been in besides some in Europe. Uh, Salvador was the one I, where I felt the safest. And, and being Mexican, the current uh, you know, problem we have with the cartels all over the country, I used in Mexico, you can experience the same as Evelyn, you know, as a woman in certain areas of the country, places where you don't want to be, places where uh, uh, at certain hours where you <laughs> It's, it's not convenient as a woman and uh, some areas where if you see someone looking sketchy, you're wondering, am I going to be chased? Is there something going to happen? But in El Salvador, that completely changes. And also the people being so... I think when I, when I first visited El Salvador uh, in February, I think, or March uh, 2023, I saw the people like coming out of their shells a little bit. I, there were places where I would go and there was, um, I was visiting this small lake. I forgot the name of it. Um, I was, I was visiting for the first time and I saw this Salvadorian, uh, women who started talking to me, uh, about, you know, being Mexican and, uh, exploring her country and everything. And she told me, this is my first time here too. This is the first time I visit as well, because I had never had the chance to actually leave my, my, my hometown because I was afraid if they saw I had money, they would try to extort me in any kind of way. And I was shocked to hear that, like, wow. Okay. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm so happy that you're here. You know, we're sharing this experience together. And second of all, that sucks. I'm really sorry. Right. Like, you seeing all these people changing their lives like that. You know, like there were some spots where they didn't have that many uh, souvenirs. And this lady told me, uh, I'm sorry, I was just not prepared for all the foreigners coming. So I don't have that many souvenirs right now. So, well, this is good news. The things are changing around. You'll, you'll be prepared in the, in the near future. Wow, that was seemed impressive. And also like all the curiosity from other fellow Mexicans, like wondering, hey, is it really safe over there? Is it, is it really, is it really possible for that to happen to a country? Because we don't know when that could ever happen to, you know, to a country like ours. Uh, I think it's very different right now from uh, what it used to be. Even when I was a girl, when I was a relatively safe country, the only city that Mexicans were afraid of was Mexico City, because that was the city where you could get robbed, right? Like handgun. Uh, but nowadays it could be almost anywhere. Seeing El Salvador, such a small country that used to be like the underdog or like one of the underdogs in Central and South America, that's where you see, wow, this is not, uh, this is possible. Everything that other uh, politicians say in our country is, you know, it, it's just manipulation and lies and excuses. You can make it happen. And People in El Salvador are very happy. You can feel the sense of like happiness, trust, uh, relief. Just something that it's not very common. Uh, it's the willingness and the energy to continue improving their state of their country. It's not like they're not just sitting in the change that happened not so long ago. They're not like, oh, well, it's a safe country now. No, they're trying to improve even, even further. They're like, okay, this is broken. How can we fix it? This needs improvement. How can we make it happen? This needs a change. And even if it is just placing a painting of flowers on a place to make it look nicer, they're making it happen. I, uh, I was telling Evelyn, I think, uh, at some point back when I was in El Salvador, I told her one thing I like about Berlin is that ideas, that they don't just to stay in the air. Whenever someone wants to do something in, in, in Berlin, from what I've seen most part in El Salvador, whenever someone has an idea, things materialize, things happen. They, they're not just sitting 
right? Like thinking and like philosophers in, you know, in Antic Grace, just having great ideas, they're actually doing these things. They're actually executing the things they want uh, to happen. And that's uh, one, uh, like, first of all, inspiring. And second of all, uh, admiring. And uh, third of all, just uh, it fills you up with so much energy. You end up being part of it because they're open to anyone willing to help. They're not just like gatekeeping, like, no, this is my project. I'll do it now. If you can help, join, right? Just not get on the way. Don't, don't be uh, someone we're going to have to drag. Just be productive. And that's something I just love so much about El Salvador um, uh, overall, but specifically about Berlin. Is there anything, uh, or uh, probably there are a lot of things, uh, because we, we are so early in Bitcoin, we are so early in El Salvador, uh, that you would say this needs still a lot of improvements. Like, is there, uh, where like the the places on the on the the, the things that El Salvador still needs uh, a lot of uh, room to grow? Obviously, we are early in the Bitcoin game. Like, adoption is not at hundred uh, percent. Security is good, but th this can always <laughs> increase and stuff like that. But is there anything that uh, you or Evelyn uh, can think of, like? like The, the, you are looking forward to that being better in like four, three, five years or something like that? Evelyn? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, the, the, there are a lot of things that still need um, improvement. And I think that, I mean, uh, some of the big changes uh, have to come from the government. Like, uh, a lot of investment and things like that because uh, we still need to continue to develop education um, the educational uh, system because uh, there are many many remote areas that still need help also health uh, there are a lot of places where that there's no a hospital in town or it, it's it is just a small um, clinic or um, unit of healthcare. So I think that those uh, are like more details that yes, needs to be looked at. Um, education, health, and I think that um, access to to the street or, or public transportation in those areas, it's something that, that needs to be looked at. Like in, I mean, if it's possible in a in that short period of time, that that will be great because there's a lot of people that still need help. But I think that overall that we are doing uh, fine, and I think it's it's moving slow, but um, that we are going Slightly. step by step. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this this is uh, some something that uh, is completely normal. And I also like I have now a, a German friend that. Is now in the process of actually moving to El Salvador. That will be really interesting for me to see who, who how he, like he sh now just jumping into the. I don't even know where actually he wants to move in, but he has the plan. <laughs> tell to, him to go labor. To, 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 <laughs> 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 I'll definitely tell him. Uh, for, uh, but let's see uh, where he ends up. But, but yeah, Berlin is, is is kind of the the obvious choice. There's also of course El Sonte, there's Bitcoin Beach and stuff like that. But uh, uh, like outside is there any other place like is 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 would you recommend outside of bitcoin and of bitcoin berlin and el sante is there another place where bitcoin adoption is like is it number three is the number three i could have by, by ruta de las flores but i don't know it's a uh, well, what japan it's the other place where it at uh, something it's starting to to be created um as of right now i think el sante and berlin are the places with more adoption But it will depend on what people like, because, uh, for example, some people, they, they like the beach, so they, they have the option to go to El Sante. If they like the mountains, they have the option to come here and, and live on a Bitcoin standard. There's people that they love the city. And so for that, San Salvador is, is the best place. There are a lot of uh, businesses accepting Bitcoin, not as many as uh, probably here. But definitely not, not as many. But um, yeah, I mean, you can find find ways to to make a living. In yeah, in regards to to Bitcoin adoption, I think these two and some that are trying to to raise right now. Mm, okay, okay, really cool. 
Um, before we get to the end routine on the end uh, um, questions for, for my podcast, um, I have one more question. This is more, more like a personal question for my uh, podcast because I've seen my statistics and I'm cl watching them carefully. And I've always seen one statistic that is completely out of order. That's I only have like five or six percent uh, female listeners and watchers. <laughs> like <laughs> my, my audience is completely just male or not just but five ninety five percent. They are a massive majority male. And when I go to Bitcoin meetups, it's also like that. If I go to Bitcoin conferences, it's also kind of like that. As in Europe, at, at least I don't know how it's in El Salvador, in Mexico, Argentina. If there's a difference right. in there, uh, it's probably probably the same. Uh, um, two questions like why do you think is that like that and and how uh how do you mean can can we change it or is that some is this just a, no, a natural progress that will take care of its own because everybody will have bitcoin anyways at some point and then we are at 50 50 i have so many thoughts on this so i'm going to let evelyn take the floor <laughs> yeah no i I think that, um, so in, in the majority of uh, the fields, it's the same and more, mostly when it's something technical, it's, it's more like that. Cause I, I used to work for so many, um, technical companies and all of my coworkers, most of them were, were men, <laughs> we were like a few women, but I think that, um, the change will, will happen slowly. And, but to me, um, I find it really interesting to combine knowledge with emotions. That's how I do things. And I think that that has helped me to be able to get involved in a lot of fields that only it's dominated by men. And because um, I try to get the knowledge, I like to share the knowledge. And I think that you, we as a woman, uh, we tend to to be more emotional, right? So I try to find how these can will benefit me and will benefit more people, um, so that I can share this knowledge. That's why I'm gonna learn it because I want to share the knowledge with other people, and that's what what's taking me to where where I'm going. Um, and I always try to to learn at least the basic to understand what I'm teaching people. And um, I think, yeah, uh, the change will happen slowly. There's a saying that Bitcoins get to you uh, at the time that it has to. So don't rush it because eventually uh, people will get there. It is just a matter of paying mm -hmm. attention. Yeah. Vanya? Yeah, I, I agree 100% with uh, what Evelyn said. I'm not you know, an expert on Bitcoin when it comes about the technical side, but what got me involved in, in this and what I was interested the most at the, uh, from the beginning was the philosophy and the lifestyle behind it, right? The congruency with uh, what uh, the currency represents within the economy system with, you know, not living that just to occur, you know, just monetary side of it but to apply it to the rest of your, uh, you know, all the other aspects of your life. I'm sorry. That's what uh, made me uh, take an interest uh, in it from the beginning. And I think the more it takes on, the more we spread, you know, that uh, word as Jehovah's Witnesses, like, have you ever heard about this different lifestyle that could actually improve your life and, you know, help you break away from all the bullshit that is dragging your life into this <laughs> dark hole of, you know, of uh, horrible things going on. There's plenty of people, because it happened to me, right? There's plenty of people who are trying to improve their lives, but they just don't know how. And many of them are being told, there's just no way out. Do you have to become this horrible person in order to, or like you have to, to uh, like exclude yourself from the group and everything. But they just don't know that there's this other side of, uh, you know, there's this group of, group of people who are already on the other side, living a different life uh, and improving, you know, everything around them just by adopting this different lifestyle. And I think this philosophy and mindset, uh, trying to spread it on, it's what's going to in get, of course, more women involved into this. Because when I was first introduced to Bitcoin, I was uh, explained 
all the technical side of it. And I was like, code, fantastic, right? Like I didn't care. <laughs> but when I got involved in the community and then everyone started explaining to me like the small businesses and, you know, they talk to you about the story and then you hear all this Bitcoiners talking about the important things no one is really addressing in a normal fiat, you know, table at a restaurant, then you're like, whoa, okay, this is, this is interesting. And then it happens, right? So, yeah, maybe lots of women right now are not going to pay attention to the technical side of it because that comes in time. But to start actually hearing uh, the red-orange pilling side of it, that can uh, snap something into people's brains. That makes yeah, sense. So. Yeah, 100% with me. I mean, in general, I think we have to make a better job in educating people in general. Uh, because people don't understand Bitcoin. And when you're deep into the rabbit hole and when you're deep into the education, learning things, you are speaking with words that other people don't understand. And if you mention like two, three, four words that the other person that you're speaking to doesn't understand, then they will not listen to you. <laughs> like you have to be, is, speak in a really simple language. I got it. I saw it with so many friends of mine. Uh, once I start uh, mentioning words that does not make sense for them, they just don't listen. Like, And o often people yeah. don't want to uh, ask the question like, oh, what is that? Because they are embarrassed that they don't know uh, uh, things about that. So that's where we have to be as an educator, as as someone that uh, explains uh, to, to other people, always be like, okay, what what is that? Does he understand that? Did he understand that? Should I explain it more like, should I even use that word? Maybe I should describe it differently. Like that's why we we can always make a better we can always make a better education, uh, and that's that's the key to to the Bitcoin adoption. In the end of the day, if we can explain it well, and if we can explain it in a good way and get it to as many people as possible, then we will succeed. Uh, other, other otherwise not, but I think we we will succeed. We we have a lot of bright minds in the Bitcoin. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I yeah, but I think that. that um, Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just going to say that I think that we um, empathy has a lot to do with it. Um, as I was giving Bitcoin education to kids, you need to find a way to really get to them because you will not talk to kids like, have you noticed that when you go to the supermarket, you buy less now? <laughs> so they don't they they don't do they don't do that. <laughs> so you need to talk candies for them you need to make examples that they that it's according to their life and it's the same for if you if you're gonna talk to a grandma if you're gonna talk to a salesman if you if you're gonna talk to people that they don't know how to read they don't know how to write because we have that here too and you need to talk to them according to their reality so that they can understand what you're talking about and why Bitcoin is important, not talking about uh, the coding side of, but what will do Bitcoin to change your life and your family's life in, um, in the present and in the future. Because, uh, for example, with, with people who has kids, parents are always worried about the future of their kids. So you, you have to know what buttons to push in order to get people's attention. Yeah, that's uh, that's very, very true. Um, and I love it. Hey, Vanya, you wanted to say something before, though? Uh, uh, I was just going to say, I think the technical side of Bitcoin comes in time. Once uh, you start getting to understand uh, the social part of it and uh, the economic side of it, and then you get more deep into the rabbit hole, that's when you stumble upon, I think, in my case, with the technical side and then you make an effort to understand and especially when you start messing you know like playing around with the apps and trying to move sats from one place to the other and then that's when you have like a little bit of more technical questions to try and do that from the beginning that's when you can lose people in in the orange filling process like, again as evelyn so very rightfully just said you, you have to know what buttons to push and not to people to start understanding and seeing how that applies into their lives otherwise mm -hmm. yeah it's nearly impossible to get them involved and we, we have to keep it as as simple as possible i mean 
I myself, I know that last year I got for the first time ever UTXO management. This is something I never thought about before. Like I was like, UTXO management, what, what, what do you mean? Like I stack sets and, and keep it in my wallet. Like what, what should I do there? Uh, and, but yet yeah, last year I learned that is a thing. And I made a few weeks ago, a special episode with Wicked from, from Twitter around UTXO management. And we talked, I think one and a half hours about that topic. And it was just scratching the surface because we wanted to make it really easy and understandable and approachable is this like this episode that I can now send to everybody who asks me, what is UTXO management? Why is it important? Why should I take, why should I take care of it? I was three years in Bitcoin. I was two years all in in Bitcoin and I only had Bitcoin and never mm -hmm. was thinking of what is UTXO management. So, so that's kind of embarrassing, but now I know. <laughs> uh, so we, we, <laughs> with, with, with time we with, with time we learn yes just give it time exactly perfect then uh before we come to the uh, official end routine i have a unofficial end routine that i kind of started in the last uh, few episodes where i asked the uh, guests uh what are they really passionate about which we didn't talk on the podcast till now like uh, maybe start with with vanya um What, what are you currently really passionate about? What are you learning? What are you doing uh, outside of Bitcoin, outside of what we talked about? Well, right now I'm very focused on completing the training for the new job I just got. When I'm working with um, with Steve, which is like, I would call him one of the benefactors of like, I don't know, uh, of the Bitcoin center in Berlin. And I'm working with him, uh, at a, you know, uh, remotely. So I'm really focused on that right now. And I'm also trying to, uh, I'm, I really like cooking. So I'm trying to get involved into learning how to cook, eat Argentinian style. Because um, in Mexico, we have our own way to do it. And I, I was lucky enough to see how they do it in El Salvador. But Argentinians have a very well-earned reputation of really knowing how to make you know, asados and like the grill and everything. So I'm trying to get involved in that right now. And it's been it's been been amazing i've been eating a lot <laughs> but yeah that's uh cooking right now it's what i'm passionate about besides just fucking in, in bitcoin and my job perfect evelyn uh well i have to to think that well I'm, i'm working on my office right now um yeah decorating my office because i have a, a new office and that that's my focus right now seeing what can i do with with the space But aside of that, I have a passion. Um, it's not a hobby. It's, it's something that it, it really fills my heart. And it's that I like to feed and help stray dogs. And yeah, anybody who knows me will tell you that I'm always hearing like dog food and things like that. So that, that's something that um, makes me feel that I'm alive for something. And yeah, so that those are in, in, in plants. I love plants. I have my house full of plants. I steal plants from the street. I, 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 I got that from Beverly. I I, I've been stealing plants too. And I, you can't see them right now, uh, <laughs> but I've been stealing plants too to like try and fix my apartment. I just moved to it. <laughs> I learned that from Evelyn. Just randomly that I like cutting pieces of plants I can tell are going to grow in, right if you like put them in on dirt or like water. Then that it works. It's a great yeah. decoration technique. Just <laughs> take plants yeah. in random places if you like them. And something so, yeah. Evelyn is the cutest thing. But um Sometimes in some parts of Berlin, dogs recognize her and they chase her around the city, like just like walking or behind her, like protecting Emily. It's the cutest thing ever. There's my very they say when they see me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very clever getting the the whole security uh, in with with uh, with, with uh, dog food. Very good. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a. Um, It's a, it's a thing that's needed. I don't think many people, like they think about dogs and they think about animals, but not that many people 
maybe because it can, like I'm not judging anyone, but not that many people get, uh, they get actively involved in helping dogs or like any animal in the street and Evelyn does. So it's just quite an example to, to follow. <laughs> Amazing. I, I mean, in Austria, never saw you don't actually, have street in Austria, I actually never saw, may, maybe I don't open my eyes enough, but I think I never saw a street dog, like a dog without uh, the things and. Like, mm -hmm. I think you, almost all the dogs in, in Austria, like, kind of somewhere. And they're, like, big centers where where uh, the street dogs come. Uh, like, if, if, if someone finds a street dog, then they, they guide them to, to the places where they at least get some shelter and some food. Uh, I once had an experience with a dog who I thought was a street dog. Uh, and and uh, I was, like, seeing him and I was, like, he, oh. doesn't, have, he doesn't have anything. And I was like, okay, let's 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 go in here and see if he has anything. Then I was like, oh, okay, he probably is with the farmer because there are a lot of big farmers. I'm like a really rural place. Mm -hmm. And then I was walking with uh, just away from him, and he was following me for like oh. half an hour, forty five minutes. And 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 I was like, I didn't didn't want to get rid of him because I was like, maybe he has actually no owner. Uh, and then I was coming home, and uh, my mom actually knew from from where he was. <laughs> <laughs> But, but he, you were taking that on. So like, <laughs> 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 that's kind of kidnapping. kidnapping. That's kind of <laughs> But uh, I did not oh. take him short, really. I, like, I think he just expected food. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Maybe. So lovely. Yeah, no, we, we, we need um, shelters here in El Salvador. So that's one of the things that we can also improve here. Because, yeah, yeah, it will be great to not have straight stray dogs. That will be awesome for them and in you know, time in general yeah in time one thing what right before we leave i think one thing it's very important for me to mention to anyone who's thinking about moving to berlin is that all the expats living in berlin right now they are um becoming berlinesses they go you know when in rome do as the Romans, everyone, uh, that's, they all get actively involved in the activities of the town, the festivities, rules, traditions, and all the etc. that comes with immigrating to another country. Because I know we call ourselves experts, but we're actually immigrants, right? So, and I say this because being Mexican, I saw in, uh, since I was a kid, uh, locals being kicked out of their homelands because foreigners moved there. And gentrification in my country has hurt locals greatly. That is not happening in Berlin. It's quite the opposite. The lives of the locals are improving. And whoever moves there, they need to know, I think, gentrification is not happening in Berlin. The town is a Salvadorian town that accepts, you know, it's a Bitcoin city, but it's a Salvadorian town. And... For for a foreigner, there's always a local. There's always an uh, you know an equivalence. There's never like the majority of foreigners, and then there's no Salvadorans. There's always a Salvadorian in there asking for a translation because they're involved in what's happening. Whenever someone you know, if they go visit, just know yes, you're welcome. Yes, everything you know, all the etcetera's of moving there, but uh, locals are just as important, if not more. I think that's something great about what's happening in Berlin. It's a uh, in Mexico we say. Mexico for the Mexicans, it didn't really happen, but it's happening in Berlin. Berlin is for the Berlinesses, so if you go there, become one. I think also a part of it is is actually just learning the culture and the language. I think is also a big part because not every everybody is uh, can can speak Spanish, so it's like a, a big part of just learning the local language, getting in touch with them. Uh, you don't have to be an, an Spanish expert at day one, uh, I think, but uh, it, it helps to be just like uh, curious and, and learn every day and, and try an effort. Like, I think, But this is general, like just like getting in a new country, getting used to their culture, getting used to their festivals, getting used to their routines, uh, participating with that. And uh, also like just like be, being, yeah. if you move somewhere, that's a big commitment also show that big commitment to the other person like it's just, uh, for, for me it's normal normal human behavior but uh, unfortunately it's not normal <laughs> that's how we have to <laughs> no. 
Jeff, then let's get to the end routine uh, of the podcast uh, where we have uh, one question from the previous guest for the next guest. And uh, you, you can choose, uh, you can both uh, give an answer to it if, if, if you want. So your Bitcoin, and the question is, once your Bitcoin stack gets to a level you are satisfied with, what would you do better in the world? Uh, probably uh, Evelyn would build a, a dog shelter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't think you need to wait until that point because <laughs> you never have enough Bitcoin. That's that's the easiest question. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, to satisfactory <laughs> level, I was told you never have enough Bitcoin. <laughs> what yeah. do you have? Not enough. Not enough. Yes, that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, with with the possibilities, I uh, will just try to do more social activities and activities that cannot only benefit in, in the present time, that, but can last longer in the future. Yeah, maybe, maybe do something for, for the street dogs and not, I mean, like to run a program, not, not just the shelter, because... The shelter will not fix the, the the situation. It will just fix it for the ones that will be in the shelter, but not for for every dog. So I will just try to run a program to prevent people from releasing dogs to the street. Vanya, uh, I guess I would try and build a center to help uh, single women who are struggling with maternity, especially young women. A place that provides an education, all type of education that's uh, needed not just financial education, like maybe even help them with, uh, you know, maternity information, because that's not always available. And, um, you know, a place that doesn't really discriminate based on the past or anything. Maybe not like in an orphanage or something like that, but um, just a shed, um, like a shelter or like a place where women can find uh, the help needed. There's lots of uh, single mothers in Mexico and in Salvador and Central uh, and South America. So I, I'd be interested in uh, trying to help improve their lives. I I love it. Uh, and this is also a, a great ending point. I love, I love the conversation with, with the both of you. I think it was also really good that we, like the both of you were in the same podcast. You have a really cool energy uh, together. Uh, thank you for being on, Vanya. Thank you for being thank on, you. Uh, Evelyn. It, it was a thank pleasure. You, thank you. Um, the last questions I have uh, are for the both of you. Um, where can people find you? If like people want to get in, in touch with either one of you or ask questions or like have, have something in mind, uh, where are your socials? Where can people find you? Where can people follow you? But my Twitter handle is Evelyn Lemos, just like my name, 2906. Evelyn Nemos to nine zero six and I yeah a DM via Twitter will be fine. Um, I'm on Twitter as well. Uh, I handle this GTXO dash ninety two. And if you cannot find me, I'm always spamming the replies of the uh, Bitcoin Berlin Twitter. So I'm over there as fans. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Perfect. Then thank yeah. you both of you uh, for for being on. No, thank, thank you very much for having us. The time was great. <laughs> <laughs>